Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at parallel lines and triangles. And uh, really, most of the focus is going to be on the triangles today, but uh, we're going to look at a couple more things with parallel lines, and those uh, parallel line pieces are going to give us the things we need to know about triangles. So the first thing we're going to look at is the parallel postulate. And uh, basically, this says through any... Uh, through a point not on the line, any point not on the line, there's exactly one line parallel to the given line. So here's the situation. If I look down here, I've got line M and I have point P. If I have this situation, so P is floating out in space somewhere, all right, it's not on that line, there's only one line I can draw that would be parallel to M. And again, postulates are supposed to be those things that seem very obvious. If I were to start drawing line, there's a, there's a bunch of lines that I could draw through this point. All right, but I could keep drawing lines all day, and there would be only still only be one line that would be parallel to M. All right, so that's the one I want to draw. Let me draw that one line that's parallel to M. And see, the reason that's obvious to us is that we look at this thing and say, well, parallel means it never intersects, and we know that if it's parallel, it means it's kind of going off at the same angle. Well, we measure angles, so it has to be the exact measurement in terms of the angle at which it's kind of going off into space at, all right? And so if they have the exact same, once we change that in any way, it's no longer parallel. So there's only one parallel line that we can draw here, okay? If I look at something like this guy, the triangle angle sum theorem. And uh, this is one of those things that you may or may not know. You might have heard this somewhere before. Uh, if you have, great. If not, that's okay. But the angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. That's what we're about to try to prove here. So we have triangle ABC, and there's the symbol for triangle, folks. It's a little tiny triangle. So imagine that. The symbol for a line was a little line, and the symbol for you know a ray was a little ray, and a symbol for an angle was a little angle. The symbol for a triangle is a little triangle. It's crazy. It, it almost makes too much sense. But triangle ABC... I want to prove that the measure of A plus the measure of B plus the measure of C equals 180 degrees. In other words, I want to add up those three angles inside the triangle and get 180. You might already know that, but now we're going to prove it so that we have a justification in terms of using it moving forward. So good old proof, statements and reasons. And if you're looking at that picture thinking, this thing looks pretty bare. I don't even know how we're going to do this, Mr. Jansen. Well, I, I agree. <laughs> Let's put down what I know. I have a triangle. All right, I know that I have a triangle. That's given. I'm given that I have a triangle. And then, yeah, if you're looking at it going, I'm stumped, Mr. Jansen. There's nothing else there. You're absolutely right. All right, this is one of those situations where, once again, we have to add something to the picture. And the thing I'm going to add, I'm going to use that postulate we just talked about right here. For any point not on a line, there's exactly one parallel line. So ignore the fact that there's a triangle here for a, for a second. Think about it in terms of the situation we just had. Look at that AC, so line AC, and then point B is floating out in space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line through point B that's parallel to AC. All right, And I know I can do that because I know there's one line that exists, and I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm constructing that line and saying, that's the, the one line, all right? Yeah, and I might not have drawn it perfectly, and that's okay. Because I labeled it this way, I'm telling you, that's the one line that's parallel, all right? And so step two, I, I just justify that. I say, you know what? I drew this line, so now I have a, oh, I should add a point up here, like D. So now I can say that line AC is parallel to line db. And I can say that because of that postulate we just used. And if you don't remember the name, that's okay. It was uh, referred to as the parallel postulate. Again, names are arbitrary here, folks. So if you want to just describe it, say, hey, there's one line through that point that's parallel to that, and that's the one that I've drawn. All right? That can be your justification. All right? I know that one line exists that's parallel through that point, so that's the one that I, I wanted. Okay? And from here on out, I'm going to do something that I technically shouldn't do. I'm going to keep referring to uh, this angle right here as angle B, uh, just for simplicity's sake and because that's the way it's stated uh, here as the measure of angle B. But what I've actually done is I've created more angles, which I'll label, I'll call this angle 1 and angle 2, perhaps. All right. 
And see, that's what those are the angles that I'm going to start to use here. All right. So there's a couple ways I I can do this in a couple different uh, uh, ways here. I can state uh, a couple different things at this juncture. I still ha I have to do all of the all of the things that are in my mind right now. I have to get down, but some of the order doesn't matter. I'm probably going to start with this. I'm going to start with the angles I just created. All right, angle one, angle two, and there's angle B as well. And right away, when you see that line, something should come to mind that you know uh, about angle one, angle two, and angle B. And hopefully you're looking at that going, hey, you know what? Because that's a line, if I add those together, it equals 180. All right? Uh, BD or DBE, uh, if I had another point on there, is a straight angle. And yeah, maybe I could put a point over, over there in space somewhere and say that that's a straight angle because it's a line in... All right, we're just going to jump right to this. We're going to say, hey, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, or sorry, actually, let me go in the same order. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. Okay? See, those three angles add up to 180 degrees because I know that it makes a line. And uh, we can justify that by saying something like our angle addition postulate. Oh my goodness. I, wrote, I went to write addition like a crazy person instead of putting an angle first. Gosh, get your head in the game, Mr. Jansen. Angle addition. All right? The three angles add up to the whole angle. That's 180 degrees because it's a line. All right? And now from here, there's a couple other things I can say. See, we've already got that 180 piece, right? Look at the prove statement. Even B is in the right spot. If only I could somehow replace... This guy right here, if only I could replace that with angle one and replace this with angle two, wouldn't that be fantastic? And so with that in mind, start looking at the picture. And you might st start to realize, well, you are going to be able to do that. See, right here in my next step, I can say that angle one is congruent. Oh, that is a terrible looking congruent symbol. I can do better than that. I believe in me. Congruent to angle A. The question now becomes why. Why are those congruent? And it becomes a little bit clearer if I kind of draw this off to the side. So here's that, that line at the top. Uh, here's AC down here. Instead of drawing the whole triangle, let me just draw AB. And see, this is angle one and this is angle A. You see what kind of angles those are? And keep in mind that these are parallel lines. And maybe it would help if I extended these a little bit. But hopefully, now that I've separated that out, instead of drawing the whole triangle, just drawing the parallel lines and AB, AB is a transversal, and 1 and A, those are alternate interior angles. And we know that alternate interior angles are congruent, so that's going to become my justification over here. Okay? Oh, yeah. Alternate interior angles. Wow. My computer is being really slow. I can't even draw an angle symbol unless I do it in slow motion of parallel lines are congruent. Oh boy, this thing is this thing's being a little sluggish. But now along those same lines, I, I wished I could replace a, a, a two with angle C, right? Well, if you look over there, hopefully you see that that's the same situation. Angle two is congruent. I wrote angle one though. Angle 2 is congruent to angle C for the same reason. And again, if you don't see it, I mean, hopefully you can see it now that, I, now that we went through the first part of this thing. But I could draw it off to the side. See, this time if I drew the lines at the top and the bottom, there's B, D, and A, C. Let me just draw B, C this time. Here's angle 2. Here's angle C. You see that they're alternate Interior angles again. It's the same justification, so I'm going to include it with that step. And now from here, you're probably going, all right, let's plug those in. But slight complication. Remember, congruent means the shapes are the same. And I can't plug a shape into an equation. That doesn't make sense. I can plug the measurement of that shape into the equation. So I do have to include this one little uh, minutia step, all right, and say the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle A. Likewise, the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle C. And that's one of those kind of technicality steps. 
I can't plug a shape into an equation, but I can plug the measurement of that shape into the equation. And if I know the shapes are the same, I know their measurements are the same. That's what being congruent means, all right? So we're going to say the definition of congruent here. Yeah, sorry, my handwriting is looking really sloppy. My computer is running in slow motion right now. But now from here, my wish has come true. When I look at the equation from step three, I was like, man, it would be great if I could just replace measure of angle one with measure of angle A. Well, I can. Look at step five. It would be great if I could replace measure of angle two with measure of angle C. Well, I can. Look at step five. So I'm there. Ready? I can replace uh, the measure of angle one with measure of angle A. So measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus I replace measure of angle two with measure of angle C. Measure of angle C equals 180 degrees, and I'm there. I, I made it. I have arrived. And all I did there was I plugged stuff in that was equal to angle one and angle two. That's substitution. Okay? So now we've proven that the three angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So here's the triangle angle sum theorem. The sum of the measures of the uh, angles in a triangle is 180. All right? Or 180 degrees, rather. That's it. Now that we know that, we can apply that to different situations. So here we go. Ready? If I look at the something like this guy, I know that the angles inside a triangle add up to 180. And here, you probably, when you first look at this, see two triangles. You probably see this triangle, and you go, OK, those angles add up to 180. 2x plus 5 and uh, the 40 and the y equals 180. Boom. Uh, but wait, that's too many variables. Well, I guess I can't use that equation to solve. Shucks. All right, let's try again. So then maybe you jump over to this other triangle. Spoiler alert, this one's going to be worse. All right, this one, I've got 4x plus 5 plus 45 plus, well, that other angle is not even labeled. It's the measure of angle A equals 180. Wow, even less helpful. That doesn't even have a variable. It's just got me the entire measure of angle A. I don't even know what that's represented by. And so here's the thing. Maybe you go to the overall larger triangle. That's still not going to help because that, that angle A is not labeled in any way. And so the, the key here is that we know things other than triangles add up to 180 degrees. The key to this one is right here. See those two angles? That is a linear pair which means those two angles alone equal 180 degrees. So in other words, 4x plus 5 plus the y equals 180 degrees. And you're probably looking at that going, well, that's still not helpful, Mr. Jansen. That's too many variables. Well, yeah, it's two variables. But look at this guy up here. This also had two variables. So now I have two equations with two variables. I can solve this using some of my algebra methods. So this is a system of equations, okay? And if I were to kind of simplify these a little bit, like this one, if I were to combine some like terms, uh, let's see, that's a 45 plus y equals 180. Maybe subtract that 45 from each side, put it in a nice format for ourselves, okay? Let me write that guy off to the side. Ready? 2x plus y equals 135. So that's one of my equations. Simplify the other one a little bit. Ready? This one, again, if I were to subtract that 5 from each side, so I get 4x plus y equals 175. Bring it off to the side over here. Ready? 4x plus y equals 175. And if you're looking at this going, OK, yeah, I remember this from algebra, Mr. Jansen. That's a system of equations. Remember, I can solve by substitution or I can solve by elimination. Because of the format that these are in right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, uh, elimination. I'm going to multiply this entire first equation by a negative, a negative 1, and now I can add them up. Negative 2x plus 4x is a 2x. The y's cancel out. They eliminate. Here, when I add those guys together, it gives me a 40. And now I can solve for x. I divide each side by 2, which gives me a 20. And once again, if this was algebra, I'd probably be done. I'd say, yes, I found x, the ultimate goal in life, right? But that's not what it asks for. It asks for me to find the measure of angle a, so I've got to plug this thing back in. And uh, I've got a couple options here. You know, 
maybe you want to plug it back in and get y first. And you can do that by plugging this back into the system of equations. You could also just start plugging it over here. Just start plugging that x into everything that you know, like right here. Plug that guy in, that's a 45. There we go, 45 degrees. And so now look at that triangle. I can find y without finishing the system of equations. I can say, hey, the 45 plus the 40 plus whatever y happens to be ha has to equal 180 degrees. Uh, so that's got to be, oh yeah, let's go purple here. Uh, so let's see, that's got to be, uh, that gives me an 85, so that's going to be a 95. So 95 degrees for that angle. And here's the thing, I could plug that x back in and, uh, over here and finish solving the system of equations, and it should give me the same thing. If it doesn't, it's automatically checking my work. And then from here, I could find uh, this guy right here. Uh, by plugging either the, the x value in or doing the whole 180 thing, the 95 plus what will give me 180. Um, so that's going to, let's see, that's going to be an 85. I plug that guy in. But now from here, look at this triangle. All right, so the triangle over here, the one we talked about earlier, right here, 45 plus 85 plus whatever a happens to be should equal 180 degrees. So now we can use that, hey, this adds up to 180 again uh, for the, the measures inside a triangle, okay? So let's see, uh, 40 plus the uh, 85, or sorry, 45, sorry, plus the 85 is 130. Uh, so it looks like this guy's got to be a 50-degree angle, okay? And here's the thing. It didn't ask me to solve for all of those things. So I didn't need to do all of that stuff. I didn't need to find the 95 degree angle or that 80, well, I did need the 85 degree angle, but I could have skipped finding Y at all, all right? I was just plugging it in to show us a little bit more of what we can do with this thing, okay? But keep that in mind, you know, make sure you're answering what the question has asked uh, you for, okay? Uh, if I look at the next one, oh, sorry, if I look at this guy, uh, exterior angles. Exterior angles of a polygon are basically like if I extend one of the sides, the angle that's on the outside. All right. So an angle formed by uh, a side of the polygon and an extension of an adjacent side. In other words, if I were to draw any polygon here, let me draw a polygon. Sweet polygon, Mr. Jansen. If I were to like extend this side right here, the angle it creates with the adjacent side right here, that's an exterior angle okay, of a polygon. All right, so extend one of the sides. What angle is created with the polygon? That's an exterior angle, all right? And then the remote interior angles are the non-adjacent interior angles uh, of an exterior angle, all right? So for a triangle, this is where we really use this thing. If I were to draw a triangle here, and uh, let's say I extended this side right here, creating this exterior angle, the remote interior angles would be this angle right here, and this angle up top, okay? It's the, the interior angles that aren't on the same, at the same spot as that exterior angle, okay? And so what we want to do here, the triangle exterior angle theorem basically says that the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior angles. Sorry, that line is just a little bit off. I was trying to move it, but it's not going to happen. Uh, so I want to show that the angle on the outside here equals these two angles added together, all right? So the measure of angle one, I want to prove measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four, all right? So let's uh, bust out our statements and our reasons. And maybe you're looking at this going, oh, man, Mr. Jansen, I'm tired of these proofs. This one's going to be tough. This one's the easiest one that we'll do in a very long time, okay? So right here, let's start with what we know. Triangle ABC. I have a triangle, good for me. That's what's given. I've got myself a triangle. We got a triangle in our hands, okay? Now let's talk about what we know. One of the things I know for sure, and probably this is the first thing that jumps into your mind because we were just dealing with it quite a bit, is I know the measurements inside the triangle add up to 180, right? Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle, oh, sorry, one's not in the triangle. Get out of here, one. Can't believe he tried to trick me like that. The measure of angle two, there we go, plus the measure of angle three, plus the measure of angle four, equals 180. Whoo, 
Ooh, yeah. The measurements of the the, tri the angles inside a triangle up to 180. Okay. So I'm just going to say triangle angles. Add to 180. Ooh. Nice description, Mr. Jansen. Ha. Huh. You really made that, uh, you really put that into like third grader words. I know. Uh, and then the other thing I know, if you kind of ignore the triangle and just look at angle one and two, that's a linear pair again, all right? Again, because we're extending that side, that's a linear pair, so those add up to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. And again, that's the linear pair postulate. You can just say, hey, linear pairs add up to 180. Make sure you write in slow motion if you have a really slow computer. Woo, I did it. Okay. And now from here, look at this. Let me read it this way. Uh, measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. And 180 equals measure of angle 2 plus the measure uh, of angle 1. Therefore, the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. See, I have two things that equal 180. Those two things have to equal each other, right? And technically, uh, you know, the way I was reading it to you, that's my transitive property. Some teachers won't let you use the transitive property unless you have it written in the order the transitive property is supposed to be, uh, you know, stated in. I think those people are crazy. Okay, so we'll just do it this way. So I'm going to say that's a transitive property, and I should have written it a little smaller. Hopefully you can read it, Okay. That, that guy over there says uh, measure of angle two. Oh, let, me, let me rewrite that one. You're killing me, Mr. Jansen. I want to be done. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I squeezed it in there. But now look at this equation. I've got the measure of angle two on each side. Subtract it. Get rid of that measure of angle two on each side. And you could actually literally write the subtraction here. I'm going to do it in my head. If I subtract measure of angle two from the first side, I get measure of angle... Uh, Two, sorry, three. Uh, reading is hard. Plus the measure, oh, I got to write in slow motion, of angle four. If I subtract the measure of angle two from this side, I get measure of angle one. And yeah, technically, I should rewrite it in the other order. Measure of angle one equals the measure of angle, okay? So it's written like the proof statement. I'm not going to make you do that, all right? We're going to say that's good to go. And that was the subtraction property of equality, all right? Yeah, let's write it in slow motion. Yep, property of equality. Woo! So now here's what I know. Triangle exterior angle theorem. The measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles, all right? So angle on the outside equals the opposite two inside angles added together. For example, ready? If I look at something like this guy, find the value of x. See, x is an exterior angle. And we know that the exterior angles equal the sum of the remote interior angles. So x equals those other interior angles added together. I could do this one in my head. x equals 160. Whew, nailed it. And here's the thing, if you forget the exterior angle theorem that we just talked about, what's going to happen to you? You're probably going to have to cry yourself to sleep, right? Every night until you get to, you know, pre-calculus. No, you're going to go like this. You're going to say, hey, the three angles inside the triangle add to 180, so uh, this guy has to be 20 degrees. Ho, ho, ho. And then you're going to go, oh, hey, look, x and the 20, that's a linear pair. They have to equal 180, so x equals 160. So there's still two ways to do this thing, all right? So please keep that in mind. Using the theorem just gives you a shortcut. If I look at something like this guy, once again, the exterior angle equals the remote interiors added together. And, uh, you know, this one, maybe we'll write it this way. We'll say, hey, you know what? The y plus the 65 equals the 108, all right? And, you know, I, I get it. Most of you could probably have done that one in your head. All right, if you can, you know, have at it. Whoops. 
And then I subtract the 65 from each side, so I get y equals, uh, looks like a 43. Okay? But once again, if you forget, you can easily come over to this guy and say, wait a minute. The 108 and this guy are a linear pair, so this one has to be a 72 degree angle. And now the three inside have to add to 180. All right? If I look at this guy, see, this one helps us out a little bit. We already did this uh, uh, particular example, all right? But when you look at something like this guy, we could find uh, some of these the, the same way. You're probably looking at this one going, okay, I want to find angle A. So this one, Y, equals 45 plus the measure of angle A. But wait a minute, that doesn't help us, okay? It's kind of a mislead. The thing that helps us is actually this exterior angle right here. Look at this guy. That's an exterior angle, and it equals these two added together. Watch the enormous amount of work this saves me because I know we're going to have to do a system of equations. Look at this. 4x plus 5 equals oh, rem remote interior angles, 2x plus 5 plus the 40. See, I have completely gotten rid of the system of equations by knowing this one little theorem. And so here I'm going to subtract the 2x from each side. Uh, that's going to give me a 2x. I'm going to combine the like terms over here. Sorry, I, I shouldn't do too much. I was going to move that 5 over 2. I was going to get greedy. Now I'll subtract that 5, divide by the 2, and I get a 20. All right? And now from here... Well, it's the same kind of thing that I did before. I can start plugging these values back in. I forget what it was before. I'm gonna, literally going to have to do all the work again. But something like this guy, if I plug the 20 in here, that gives me a 45-degree angle. Oh, yeah, it's all coming back to me now, which makes this guy a 95-degree angle. And now, come down here to this equation. Ready? Y is 95, so 95 equals 45 plus the measure of angle M. But you see how much work I saved by knowing that exterior angle theorem, okay? So now subtract that 45, measure of angle A equals 50 degrees. I got the same answer, but I did a lot less work, okay? So through any point not on a line, we can draw one parallel line. The angles inside a triangle add up to 180. And then the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior, okay?